Hey everybody, how's it going? I just wanted to fire up the cameras and the lights and everything and just kind of say hi and uh, talk about the studio a little bit today. I would say this is uh, about what's been going on around here lately, but uh, the answer to that is uh, not much. A, a lot of things have kind of changed around here, at least uh, hardware-wise, and I figured it'd be at least uh, remotely interesting to just kind of jabber on about it a little bit today. Oh, one thing I did want to mention, uh, just kind of right off the bat, uh, uh, you know, if you just kind of check out the uh, check out the shirt here, uh, my wife actually made this. It's just a one-off, but uh, she, she got one of those cry cut or cricket things and uh, made a your home recording studio shirt, which I think is pretty darn cool. But let's just take a quick look around and uh, let's just kind of jabber on a little bit about uh, what else going on around here. All right, I'm going handheld. Hopefully, I don't make anybody seasick. You know, as you uh, look across the desk here, kind of the first thing you notice is uh, the Yamaha speakers. They're they're gone. They're not here anymore. What happened? Decided to finally retire those HS80M speakers that I've been using for years. As a second pair of speakers uh, with the Atom A7X, uh, they just took up so much desk space. And so I got to free up a whole bunch of desk space and one thing I got to do with that desk space was turn my computer around so I can actually admire the innards of it. Computer absolutely rocks. The thing is just, it's quiet, it's fast as heck, and it does everything that I need it to do in a home studio. I love it. Uh, kind of obscuring it here a little bit. I'm still uh, using the Microsoft Surface Pro 6 as my kind of secondary computer. I've got the Motu M4 plugged into it. That's what I'm recording through now. So for all my videos, that's what I use. I've got the Surface and the M4. I run my mic through a DBX286S. It's over here and probably out of focus. And just run a wireless lab through that into the Motu. I run Reaper on this, which is kind of blown out here, but yeah, that's Reaper if you can recognize it and just record my voice to that. And that's what I sync up to the video and all, uh, and all the videos are released on the channel. It's an excellent setup. I, I still love that M4. The M4 was really like the biggest kind of pleasant surprise of all the interfaces I've uh, reviewed on the channel. But I got to do that with all the space that I saved from getting the Yamaha speakers off of here. The reason, the main reason I got rid of the Yamaha speakers was because honestly, when it comes down to it, those things were noisy. Uh, you know, they, they have just kind of like a base level of hiss uh, that they emit anytime they're powered on. But, you know, it, that's not too bad or anything. Although now that they're gone, I can appreciate how much quieter it is in here. Anytime I was doing anything that involved the graphics card, any 3D, anything, you know, video games or any application that used that graphics card, those speakers would pick it up and just growl and whine and whir and whiz. And, and I just, I thought it was both sets of speakers until I finally powered off the Yamahas and realized that the Atoms were absolutely dead silent in that same situation, sitting right next to each other. And not only the one that was sitting over here near the computer, but the one that was sitting over here across the, across the desk, that thing made the same noise. And while I love the HS series from Yamaha, I finally, you know, they're sitting in the closet over here. And um, I, I guess I'm probably going to sell them off or something. Oh yeah, on the, uh, <laughs> watching some T. Woodford on YouTube. If you're at all interested in guitars or guitar repair or anything, highly recommend this channel. As far as other changes or anything, uh, you know, nothing over here. Still got all the FMR stuff and the distressors, which I, do, I just love that stuff. All of them. Over here, uh, you notice the Art Pro VLA is gone, and I'm using the TransY. And I, I still really enjoy that TransY. Like, it's just a kind of a colorful, you know, it's got a lot of personality. Below that, I've got the Proco Switch Witch, which uh, it, that's my monitor switcher, which now I guess I don't really need. I'm, I don't think I'm going to get rid of it. I might just box it up, put it in the closet for a while, because I can't rule out that I'm not going to end up with another pair of monitors at some point, even if it's just some, you know, basic computer speakers or, a, you know, a mix box or what do they call them, mix cube or something. And then the beloved BAE 1073 down there. I swear, the 1073, that thing is just an absolute beast. I love it. I wish I had another one. I wish I could afford another one. <laughs> 
And other stuff on the desk, yeah, you know, I got my same keyboard. Oh yeah, the um, I never did a follow-up on the ARC USB from RME, but, uh, and I, honestly, I'm not exactly sure if there's enough material for an entire video there on it, but um, uh, I like it for the most part. The, the jog wheel, I love uh, a whole lot better. It's just a little more fine-tuned and you don't have to travel as far to turn things up and down. I like the smaller form factor. It's a little longer than the ARC was, but it's narrower. And on this desk, in my situation, yeah, that's definitely appreciated. Still got my old uh, Personas, the first gen uh, fader port. I need to replace this thing. The record button no longer works. And honestly, the transport controls are one of the most useful things on this to anybody that's you know not using Studio One. I'm, you know, I'm using Reaper, but it still works pretty good in Reaper, but man, the transport controls are gold on this as along with the fader and the record button doesn't work anymore. So honestly, I, I just use the uh, transport and the record button on my Impact LX25 Plus uh, from Nectar, uh, which is just a little 25 key MIDI controller. I tap in drums with that. I, the little bit of synth and keyboard stuff that I do, which I, I can't play the piano to save my life, but the transport controls are great on that. They work great in Reaper, uh, just like the, the fader. The fader works just like the fader port fader, only it's not motorized. Hiding in the box over here is uh, gonna be my next audio interface to review. I won't give it away quite yet, but it is uh, tied for the cheapest uh, audio interface you can buy right now. So I'm looking forward to playing with that, probably here in the next week or so. Ah, and then kind of the coup de gras over here. Let's go and take a look. You probably saw my video on the RME Fireface UFX Plus. I, I am still just absolutely in awe of this thing. At the time of that video, I had it paired up with a Behringer ADA 8200, which is an awesome little interface um, or extension to an interf interface. But since I paired the UFX Plus up with a 12 mic, which we'll get to here in a little bit, I didn't really have much need for all the preamps, the eight preamps that the ADA 8200 had. So instead, I ended up with, let's turn them on here, a Ferrofish Pulse 16. And so this is actually two ADAT uh, ADAT, which carries eight channels at 44.1 or 48K. Uh, it's two of those. So there's 16 line ins, 16 line outs out of the Pulse 16 via two ADAT connections to the UFX Plus. And then I've got all of those. I bought another ART patch bay. And so between the two ART patch bays, uh, I'm able to get all of my analog ins and outs. I can loop in all my compressors. I can loop in my, you know, preamp. I can loop in the DPXs and I still have plenty of room for growth. Oh, and I forgot to mention while I'm stooped down here, you can kind of see in the background there underneath the desk, there's still the Yamaha subwoofer. And I'm actually running uh, the Atoms, the A7Xs through that. You know, since the A7Xs are, you know, yeah, they, they don't really reach down very low. Um, there's not a whole lot of sub information that they uh, reproduce. And oh my goodness, as much as I love the A7Xs before, uh, pairing them with a sub uh, has just brought whole new life to them. They sound amazing. The mic locker, uh, it's looking kind of, kind of lonely, isn't it? There's no there's hardly any microphones in the mic locker. There's a, there's an SM57, there's the Aventone CV12, and uh, other than that, uh, what's going on? Where, where are all the microphones? Well, that's when we get to the fun part here. So I mentioned the 12 mic, the RME 12 mic that I've got paired up with the UFX Plus. And if we look back here in my terrible cable management, the orange cable back there, is a fiber optic cable and that's plugged in to the back of the 12 mic and yeah, don't don't pay any attention to that cable mess there let's not talk about that but if we follow that around yeah yeah i could do a much better job of getting this set up but we followed it around and look at this there's a bundle of 
what is it, 50 meters or 60 meters? Yeah, it's a couple hundred feet of <laughs> fiber optic cable. Let's go take a look at the living room. All right, well, it's very dark in here. One moment. All right, that's better. And so up in the, the living room, I have the most ridiculous kind of setup here, but this room is just amazing for recording drums. And uh, so I've got, you know, still got the same Yamaha kit here, got all the mics and everything on it, but let's go straight to the 12 mics sitting over here. And of course he's not plugged in, but hey, let's turn them on anyways. Right now, when I want to record drums, I just end up routing that, you know, 200 feet of cable <laughs> up the stairs and uh, through the room here and connected in here. So not exactly a uh, nice or sexy kind of uh, way to do it. But until I gather up the courage to run it through the floor and up through a wall jack over here and all that stuff, um, that's just the way I got to do it through Maddie over fiber optic it gives me 12 inputs 12 microphone preamps to mic up a drum set and then i get two return channels on the headphones uh, so i can actually you know hear what i'm recording with and so 12 microphones 12 mics on a drum set that's uh, that's a lot it gives you a lot of flexibility a lot of kind of cool ways to do stuff so the way i've got it right now i have an audix d6 kind of crammed back in there that you can kind of see i guess as my kick in so there's one channel uh as a kick out right now i've been i've been playing around with using the cascade fathead which i kind of like on snare i have just the classic sm57 and hey since i had 12 channels to play around with i've been doing an underside uh mic i'm using an audix uh, i5 right now although i think that's kind of sagging a little bit I need to adjust that and since it's a little mid scooped um, does a great job in the lows and the highs uh yeah that's been a good fit for underneath the snare so far I've got my MD-421s. I finally got a second and third one of these. One of them I bought from Sweetwater full price and uh, eesh, those things are expensive to buy full price. And another one I bought off of Reverb used for a pretty good price. And then I waited the four or five months from Musician's Friend to get another one at a, about a 45% discount when Sennheiser was running that big sale. So now I've actually got a full complement, three of those fellas, and they do a, you know, the MD-421, they're, they're great on more than just a tom. They're great for all sorts of stuff, bass guitars, guitar cabinets, vocals, you name it. It's a good mic to have around. For overheads, I'm using, I, I decided to, tr to start fooling around with XY. I usually do a space pair, but I'm using Shure SM81s, and my goodness, I, I forgot how much I liked those on overheads uh, they do a great job and the xy uh, just able to use i got this k m uh, this mammoth uh, extra large stand from k m and with no i mean look at that thing it's fully extended all the boom is almost fully extended and th those mics have been sitting there without moving for months now no sag nothing highly recommend it um am i saying the right things it is k m right yeah, yeah, k and &M. And to kind of uh, dry up the overhead sound, this is a pretty reverberant room. You might be able to hear it in the lavalier mic. Um, but I've, you know, set up one of my acoustic screens over here where this mic is pointing and this one is kind of out of the way because it's kind of a pain in the butt to have it, uh, you know, where the other mic is pointing unless I'm actually recording. All right, so that's only nine microphones. Where, do you, where are the other three? So... <laughs> I have, as room mics, way back over here, I set up my C414s. I keep these things on them. Oh, this is still phantom powered and everything. But uh, I keep these, <laughs> the, their, their little claws on them to keep them from getting dusty. Uh, they're just set into regular cardioid mode, no cut, no uh, pad or anything. 
And, oh, gosh, they, they've just been doing a great job of uh, room mics. And I've, I've got the other one sitting over there in the other corner. And I have just really been enjoying uh, playing around with those as room microphones. Uh, all right, so that's two of them. So what's the other microphone? And actually, it's a mic that I'm not running to the 12 mic. It is... You know, a guy's been watching too much uh, YouTube and specifically Steve Albini videos on YouTube, but there's a lavalier mic uh, gaff taped <laughs> to the bass drum. And I've been playing around with that. Honestly, I love it. I love it, except that it picks up a lot of snare. And so I'm still working on the whole, you know, using compressors and side chains and stuff to kind of duck out the snare a little bit. I've got the uh, Acrolyte uh, Black Galaxy as my current snare, which uh, I stopped using because it was so ringy. And I ended up, sorry about my focus here, it's kind of low light in here. Uh, but I ended up getting, uh, you know, one of those Evans Genera dry heads uh, for my other snare, for my Yamaha snare, the wood one. And I liked it so much, like it, I, I'll, I'll be darned, that does absolutely take care of ring. And so I figured, hey, let me try one of those on the uh, Ludwig. And I'll be darned, it worked. It works great, sounds great. Okay, so yeah, other than that, you know, that I've, my, this is my kind of drum tracking headphones. Uh, I've got some of those extreme sound uh, isolation headphones, which are, you know, they're, they're not as good as you would think at isolation, but they are better than any of my other headphones at isolation. Uh, the sound quality is okay. Oh yeah, and uh, the, the, the lavalier mic, I've got my, my other body pack up here because I'm actually running it wirelessly. I don't have another way to plug in a, the, a lav mic other than to a body pack, so I just run it wirelessly to my studio downstairs and just plug it directly into my interface. So that's why there's uh, 11 and not 12 uh, mics plugged in over here. And anything else? Uh, yeah, the TuneBot. The TuneBot has been getting me by on uh, teaching me how to tune drums. That's about all I can say. There's the uh, Yamaha snare, which I do love. Uh, I just love the Acrolyte more. Yeah, so what do you do? Well, you use the Acrolyte. Just a good rock snare. Just sounds great. Okay, all right. Well, let's head back downstairs. Okay, before we head back down, let's stop and say hi to the dogs. Hi, Morley. Yes. Hi, Miss Morley. And hi, Bruno, who's very close. Yes, hi, Bruno. Where's Freddy? Where's he at? Where'd you go? Hi, Freddy. All right, back into my haven. Uh, nothing's changed with guitars or amps. Uh, I did, uh, <laughs> I, I biased my Marshall, my JCM 800, and uh, I, I kind of blew it up in the process. So uh, it's got some tape and stickers from the repair shop that I took it to. Turns out I just blew a fuse. I made a bad, uh, bad calculation on where I biased it to. Blew a fuse. Uh, the fuses, I believe, were original to the amp from 1986 or so, and they came apart inside of the amp when I tried to replace them. So, yeah, yeah, so it's been a couple of months, a few months, uh, at the repair shop, which was in the process of going out of business as I took it there. That's always a great feeling. But hey, they were good people. They did a great job. It works. It sounds amazing. My one um, guitar addition uh, is... This fella right here, which is the Wampler Tumnus. This is a Klon clone. I've never in my life played with a Klon before, and it has been revolutionary. Absolutely fantastic. If you ever get a chance to play with any of the Klon clones, there's a bunch of them out there from different brands. I absolutely love it. It just kind of turns any amp into just a... Uh, higher gain version of itself and you know like the JCM 800 which you know not exactly famous for having a ton of gain on tap I can plug into the low sensitivity out uh, input which I've always loved but it's just yeah you know and feeding it with something like a you know a TS9 or a um, you know an OCD you know there's benefits to that stuff but 
this thing, oh my goodness. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Seriously, if you get a chance, pick one up, give it a try. All right, well, I think I've wandered around enough. I hope I haven't made anybody seasick uh, from hand-holding for all this time. But yeah, that's that's kind of where things are at around here. You know, it, it, there's been a lot of uh, hardware activity, but uh, not a whole lot of uh, music making or video making activity. Uh, yeah, I should probably mention that the channel has um, aged to five years old. Last year, I thought it was five years old, but then I did the math and realized, nope, nope, it was only four, only four years old. So uh, I, I just do want to, anybody that's watched this long through the video, uh, I, I just want to give just a, a heartfelt thanks. You know, I did, we're up to over 13,000 subscribers, which when I started the channel five years ago was an unimaginable <laughs> number of people uh, in the world that would be interested in just watching some random guy in his basement who's just an enthusiast about all this stuff and, and loves interfaces and microphones and preamps and compressors and all that stuff. Thank you so much. You know, you, you guys watching and, and, and you all commenting and liking and subscribing and, and everything, it, it, it really makes all of this um, so much more re rewarding and so much more fulfilling. So a deep, deep thank you to all of you. And I guess I will shut up this time and I guess look for an audio interface review and maybe some other content. I got some great feedback on the uh, speaker experiments and everything. So we'll try some more of that stuff here coming up. Have a great one. Thanks so much for watching. That'll do it for me this time. And I'll see you guys again next time.